Prusa printers are known for their exceptional print quality while also being straightforward and easy to use. Thanks to their open source nature, upgrades are readily available, so every time a new version is released you have the option of purchasing just the upgraded parts rather than a whole new printer. Every so often though, new users have to grapple with the idea of choosing between the pre-built or kit versions. So in this series of videos, we'll go through the entire build of their latest model, the Mark IV, in some depth, along with some added tips and tricks thrown in along the way too, making the build a fun and enjoyable process. One of the main arguments behind getting a kit is that you'll develop a good working knowledge of how the printer functions and the skills required to disassemble it for upgrades and troubleshooting. So during assembly you'll learn all the terminology and what the parts are. This will benefit you in the long run, for times when you'll no doubt need to fix or adjust something on the printer. Now let me just start by saying attention to detail is critical here. Following everything in this video guide to the letter is important as the slightest variance can cause rather sizable issues later down the road. While you'll come across various build tips in the process of following this build guide, note that this is a project that requires a lot of patience, double checking that you're using the right parts and in the right place. So again, follow this guide as closely as possible. If you feel two parts don't fit together, take a step back and take some time to reassess. Some parts are made to tight tolerances while others are 3D printed and may need some cleanup, which we'll cover during the build, but generally they all fit together really well. The total time required for assembly varies, but if you're doing it correctly you should spend a solid 8 hours or so, if not more with some breaks thrown in. Moving on to the actual components, Prusa have done a great job of bagging and labelling the parts, and this dramatically reduces confusion and makes the assembly process more straightforward. You won't have to hunt around in a bag for loose parts as everything is already organised for you. Saying that, don't be tempted to open all bags just yet. Open a bag at a time as and when you come to that particular section of the build. It'll keep everything organised and reduce the chances of losing any component or having to search around for it. When it comes to tools, those are included too, so you'll find a pair of needle nose pliers, along with a Phillips screwdriver included with the kit, as well as a set of allen keys. Now these do come in use for some tighter to reach areas, so do keep them handy, but using a separate set of hex drivers will make driving most bolts into place that much more quicker and easier. This time round we'll receive a universal wrench too, which will be used more when we come to construct the extruder assembly later in the build. Personally, I do like to use a small amount of thread lock in some places too, when constructing the frame for instance, Certainly nowhere near any plastic parts though, so that's completely optional. A few other items will come in handy, such as a marker, as well as a hobby knife for cleaning up some of the parts from prints, typical items you'll most likely have laying around anyways, so we'll cover these as and when they're needed. Otherwise that's all we need for now, there's no soldering or wire crimping to complete, so with everything we need to get started, along with plenty of spare desk space at the ready, Join me in the next video where we'll get started with the main frame and Y axis assembly. 